Just now, Kirchhoff's first law is about conservation of charge. Now, Kirchhoff's second law is conservation of energy. <clears throat> you say, Miss, this sounds like chapter 6, work energy power. Yeah, same idea. We already have a look at it earlier already. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if you have so much energy, there is only so much you can use. Oh. So if I have this picture, good old <clears throat> animation, if your battery gives you, okay, this one we consider, this part is battery PD. Lah. If your battery PD is only so much, then the total PD that you drop for this light bulb all have to be the same. Okay, so you have 3V here, then you have 1V, 2V, 3V. All this add up together equals to the total that your battery has. And that is literally what Kirchhoff said. He observed this and he said, hmm, the sum of EMF equals sum of PD around a closed loop. Here they use the word EMF because usually um, they consider internal resistance as another resistor. So let's say your battery has internal resistance, okay, la, add another resistor that represents that internal resistance. So just look at the EMF. <clears throat> sum of EMF equals sum of PD around a closed loop. Just now we talk about junctions, now we're looking at loops. What is a loop? Loop means you start here, you go one round, you come back. That is a loop, lady. A closed loop. And this is what this is the simple circuit that we've been looking at so far. What if there's something more complicated? Like this. Got parallel lines one. How le? Let's go and see. Okay. So here if you have all these charges moving up, you see all the coulombs at the battery side, right? They suddenly get energy, then they go up. That's thanks to the EMF. So EMF, if you're going from the negative to the positive side of the battery, you're going up. Plus EMF. And then you go down, down, down. This one is when you're going through a component. PD across a component. Okay. So here that is illustrating la, the amount you go up has to be the same amount you come down in the closed loop. So this is a loop ready. You start here, go up, come down. Loop, loop, loop. Okay. So we'll leave those complicated ones for another time. Back to this point. See here, we have uh, EMF up, then, well, this is parallel, so you can say this is one loop, okay? And in this loop, you drop a certain PD, which is the same amount as your EMF, okay? So, how you can summarize this in terms of a kind of like an equation almost, that use a sum of EMF, sum of PD, all those, you can write it this way. You say... The sum of EMF equals to the sum of potential drops. Or, because if you say like, I don't want to write PD, means can I use something else? I can. Then you say sum of V. Lo. V here represents the potential difference across each component. Or you can say sum of E equals to sum of IR. Because IR is V. Okay? So, when you talk about loops, let's check all the loops. The first loop, loop number one. You know, I need to change the pen color so I can see. Red color can, uh, can. Uh. I can also. Yellow, yellow. Let's do this. Yeah, that's better. So, loop number one. Then you have loop number two. Then you have, you may start from this uh, point. Loop number three. And then you can have the major, you start on the battery, you loop number four. Can also. Okay, so I'm going to look at loop number four because that's the one which is most directly relevant here. Loop number four. Actually, got more loop there. Ah, yeah, draw all, ah, draw all. Loop number four from the battery. Loop number five. Loop number six. Basically, just trace all the paths that has EMF, PD, everything. So first things first, if you want to look at the EMF thing, no matter which light bulb you go through, which loop you take if you're going from the battery side, you will have some EMF E. That's the only one battery, right? No other battery inside circuit. Equals to potential drop across any of these light bulbs. So it's just V. Though. So V, though, my equation very short now. Just one component. I will see more with more stuff later. Then you may be wondering, Miss, if I take, let's say, loop 3, for example, I start in this top right, the uh, top left corner, can also use this, ah? Can. We can. That one, you have to think of it in a little bit of a different way already. 
you start here, you go down the mountain, then you go up the mountain. So, we have kind of to rearrange this as sum of E minus sum of V equals to zero, those kind of stuff. So, you have to start from here if you say, okay, I go down the light bulb, so I minus V. Then, I want to go up the light bulb, so plus V. And that should equal to zero because I come back to the same point. Okay, let me highlight the row I'm taking. I'm looking at this path now. Okay, I go down the light bulb, then I go up the other light bulb. So, down, up, back to the same point, zero. That's also the same idea in Kirchhoff's law. You might be saying, miss, isn't this obvious? Minus V plus V, zero. Yes, but make sure you know your basics because when you come to more complicated circuits, these are the same ideas, just a little bit more complicated. Let's look at this first one from page 51. I want you to try, see how you can solve it first. Don't do the whole thing, like, the whole thing is a bit long. Just do until this part one, apply Kirchhoff's law to determine resistance R. Take about five minutes to try through it. Okay, the first part you kind of have to remember and write what is the definition of Kirchhoff's laws. So yes, five minutes, pause the video if you need more time or if you think like, Miss, I can write this in light speed as you talk, I can solve. Okay, sure. But yes, go try this out first. Give yourself maximum five minutes. Let's see, Kirchhoff's first law. The best way is to talk about this, sum of, sum of current in equals sum of current out, where? At a junction. But don't, but don't write this out, write a sentence. Okay. So you want to say the sum of currents in to a junction is same as sum of currents out of junction. Sometimes, uh, the monk scheme will be more picky. They will say you must have some currents, only you can get. But sometimes they are inconsistent. Like year to year is a bit different, but you just follow the strictest one. Also, make sure you write sum of currents, make sure you write junction also. I like say sum of currents equals sum of currents. Huh? What does that mean? Be specific. So, B1. Then the second one, they say Kirchhoff's first law is linked to the conservation of something. Currents, right? Charges come in. I mean, same amount of coulomb come in, same amount of coulomb must go out. So that means the conservation of charge. Charge cannot be created or destroyed. They are just there. Kind of thing, no? Okay. Charges, you know, each charge, electron. Oh, if charges can be destroyed, oh, our world is ending, man. Or oh, we would have found a way to destroy our world. Anyway, this one. Variable resistor of resistance R is used to control the current. Yep, variable resistors like real stats, potentiometer, these are used to control current la, by because that's the only thing how else we're gonna control current. You either change the EMF or you either adjust the variable resistor. Here you have a generator G, so it's also creating electricity here. That's why you see you got plus minus is a battery. Battery. EMF 20 volt internal resistance. Current circuit, 2 amps. Let's draw the current. Uh, label it. Here you might be wondering, is the current like that down or up? How you know that? Actually, it doesn't really care in this case. But if you really want to know, this one, the EMF is bigger. This one, the EMF is smaller. So it's going to push. The bigger one's going to win now. It's going to push the current in an anti-clockwise direction. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Anti-clockwise like this. Anti-clockwise. Now, how, how do we solve? What are we looking for here? We're trying to find the resistance R. You got two batteries here and you want to apply Kirchhoff's laws. But the second law, okay, not the first law because there's no junction here. So your first law is pretty much useless. Current is the same everywhere in the whole circuit. But Kirchhoff's second law, sum of EMF equals to the sum of potential drops in the whole circuit. Let's not do the one where it's like equals zero because that one you have to think of positive, negative, which one is which. Okay, so EMF. Let's check the EMF first. Uh, let's say I start from here, la. follow current direction, and then I move. I check in that direction. Go, go, go to this one. Okay, so you have first EMF here. You're going from negative to positive. So you're going up. 
okay, so you have 20. Then, you come down to this second battery. Here is the positive, here's the negative. Oh, you're going down now from positive to negative. So down 12. Then go back to the original. Okay, can I do that? If you're wondering why negative, well, we just say you go up and you come down one of these. Or you can think of these two batteries are fighting. So they are kind of cancelling each other out. So 20 minus 12. But it's better to think of up and down. No? Up potential and then down potential. Then what else? Sum of uh, PD. Okay. So what are all the resistors here? Let's also start from this same point. Let me highlight it. Start from here. Because you need to start looking from somewhere. Ma. So you have the current 2 amps. Passing through the first 0 0.5. So here you're going to have a PD already. So that will be current IR, V equals to IR. So current times resistance, IR. That's the first potential drop. Then you go, 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 go. Oh, there's another one. Go around the loop, come down here. Here's another potential drop, V2. I should label them. So you just add, lah, add together. Mm, current is 2 amps, 0 0.1, 0. Um, and that's it. Is it? Oh, one more. Don't forget the R we're trying to look for. So go, 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 go. Here, this another potential drop, V3. So let me just write that down. That will be current times resistance. I don't know, R. From there, you can rearrange to find your R. So 20 minus 12 minus 2 times 0 0.5 minus 2 times 0 0.1. Yeah, by 2. 6, 3.4. 3.4 ohm. No SF, right? This is 3.40. Okay, 3.4. So 3.4 is the, 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 the potential drop, related to the potential drop across R, R and you can first do 3.4. So, done, no? How many marks is this? Two marks. Okay, so probably it's one C1 here, A1 here. Let's check, is it? Yes, it is. Okay, so what we just did here was summary. Sum of E equals to sum of V, which is just I, R, across the whole loop. This is considered one loop, okay? So not too hard, like, just go one by one, like, just be careful the battery side. You have this negative, positive kind of thing, okay?